Hey, I'm Thomas. I'm, uh, I'm an engineer in the uh, IDE group, which is responsible for uh, the GitLab workflow extension. And now I'm going to show you how we release the extension. This video is mainly aimed at maintainers of the VS Code extension, but it can also be uh, interesting to any engineers who want to know what the process is. So um, this is the marketplace page of the extension. Here you see the latest version and when it's been released. And at the end of this video, we'll create a new version 3.69.0 and we'll release it to this marketplace. And then we have the OpenVSX marketplace as well that's uh, not owned by Microsoft and can be used by other uh, VS Code uh, forks like the VS Codeium. Um, so the release process goes as follows. And I, I'll, I had two merge requests that slightly alter the release process because um, as I was going through it, I realized that for new maintainers, it might be useful to and for non-maintainers, it might be useful to add additional steps. So we are releasing irregularly. There is no fixed schedule. Usually we just wait for a fix or user facing feature that provides value. And if there are many of these fixes coming, we try to not release more often than once per week, but we can, it's just, I don't know, you'll see how long it takes. It's a manual process, partially manual process. So. We are not releasing ev on every change necessarily. Um, let's get to it. Uh, there is first change that I that I made is how to find a maintainer. So the edit line is here. If you are not a maintainer, ask one of the maintainers. You you can see that it's Enrique, Paul, Shakar, and myself at the moment but that might change when you are watching the video. And you ask one of us to, to release. And now for the maintainers, to perform the release, you go to your local uh, development environment and optionally, you just quickly check, like do a smoke check in your local environment that the extension works. Why I'm saying optionally, because the release process is um, very rarely breaking with the whole extension. You know, uh, the, the expectation here is not that you would go and uh, retest every feature that's being uh, released that's, that was up to the feature authors. This is more testing that the extension doesn't completely break. And that happened only once in the last three years. And it was because we were moving files around and there was a difference. That was just unexpected breaking change that prevented the extension from starting. And then we had to roll back. And, and the rollback would be just uh, retagging some older version as a new version and running that pipeline. You'll see how that's done. So um, let's let's go for it, even though I would, wouldn't usually do the test. Let's do it for the sake of the full uh, full manual. We can open the VS Code extension and now locally you can run the extension just with the run and debug panel in VS Code that compiles the assets, starts the extension. You see that it's running. There are some issues assigned to me. This is as far as I would go with the smoke test. There wasn't any issue at the start and I see something in the in the panel and that's that. So Step two is update the package version. Currently, we are not, uh, we don't know, we are not automatically using conventional commits to decide the the semantic versioning of the next version. And so what I would do, I would do git log and I would have a look whether we have a feature there. So chore, chore, CI refactor. And if I just search for feature, there is a um, there is a feature. Nope. Next. Ooh. 
feature since the last last tag. Now I'm a little bit I get confused. Let's 68 is the last version. And after that I was expecting whether that there is a feature, but there isn't. Is it possible? I think so. So that means that we are going to be releasing a patch. Mm, let's do that. If there is only fix and like this one and not a feature, then it's a patch version because we didn't release anything, any new feature uh, functionality. So git, uh, sorry, it's npm version patch. Let's have a look at the documentation. That's that. If you only release bug fixes, it's going to be a patch. And that's the main step. This will create a ver create a new version in the package uh, JSON. It will uh, run the conventional changelog, which generates a changelog, and it commits and tags the new this one this one change. So if I do git show, you'll see that there is a new changelog with only bug fixes. That there is the change to package JSON and package log JSON. Sorry, the other way around package log JSON and package JSON. And those are the all the changes. So now um, there is comes the second change that I'm um, that I'm show gonna show you that is not merged yet, but it will be by the time you are watching the video. And that's this change. So if I open the file Because the next step is manual and it's when there are community contributors, doesn't matter whether it's feature fix or anything else, it's uh, contributed by a person who is not a GitLab team member, we are adding contribution for them into the change log. And so usually I was just going through the, through the commits and I, because historically I was merging most of the merge requests, I, I knew whether there was community contribution or not. But now since there is, are multiple maintainers, I'm not going to be aware of all the contributions since the last release. And so I created this one liner where you run it and it will show you that since the last, um, since the last, like the last version that we are just about to release, has, has had contributions from these uh, contributors. And so I see that there are two, three non GitLab uh, emails. It's Fernando. Fernando's, I, I know that he's GitLab team member. It's Ilya who's using his personal email. And then this looks very suspicious, like my, um, like my, uh, Macbook. I have no idea how that got there, uh, but I'm not going to investigate. I'm going to investigate it after this video. But anyway, like you don't see um, a contributor that's not from, that's not GitLab team member. Let's see how if I run this command between the last, like uh, for the second last version. So instead of doing this, um, this dynamic, I'm uh, 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 tag finding, I'm just going to type in the tags, which is 360 67 0 and 368 0. Get lock. Yeah, I think that there needs to be space here probably. And it's V because the tags are prefixed with V. Mm. Maybe I can uh, live demos is just the best. I could have sworn that that would. Version 37.8. Okay. That just comes to my eyesight. No such path in the work tree. Okay, 
now this was a little bit different because it's 3737. I wish I could cut this out, but I can't because just I'm not going to be post processing the video. But anyway, so after this uh, little a little episode of me not being able to type a command, here's a list of contributors of between versions 37 and 38. And you would notice that there is X sheep there, users no reply. So that's not a GitLab. Do you remember? And if I'll show you the change log, um, that would be best here probably. The change log. Where would it be? For the last version, you would see that there is a community contribution running job SVG is not showing. And that is, um, so we added the contribution to Leonard here because he, um, he introduced this fix. And so that's pretty much what the next parts of the process for adding contributions has. In the result, if there is no email from gitlab.com, that means that we have community contribution and we manually add a contribution to the change log as a next line. It, here's the markdown of how that would look like. You need to go and find, uh, find the merge request and uh, link it to the uh, person's account. If they use their name at, in their account, you use their real name. If they don't, you just uh, put their, if you don't know their name, you use their um, uh, username, GitLab username. All right, so once we've done this, let's push the version. So we created version 3.68.1. And so we do git push, that will push the one commit in main that we just look, looked at, this one. Um, and then we will run, so we push that to main and we git push um, the tag. Or I can actually just say git push origin v3 68 68 one. Now, historically we used to say git push dash dash tags, but that caused issues because people sometimes had some work in progress or test tags in their local uh, repositories and then they would push them as well. So this is a safer way, it's documented here git push origin, that's the version. So we push it and what's the next step? Uh, we trigger the publish step. So let's have a look at the, if we go to build pipelines, we will see that there is the new pipeline for a, for a tag, here we go, and we will wait till the publish, uh, pu publish jobs finish, and I'm going to pause the video now and I'm going to start it again when that's done. Okay, so the pipeline succeeded. And now if we look at the documentation, we just trigger the publish steps. So let's do that. We trigger the two publish steps. That doesn't take too long. And after, after that's done, it takes um, something in between five and 15 minutes before it starts updating. Um, before it gets to the marketplace and you can update it in your local uh, v uh, uh, VS code. And so after that's done, we will check that it works. I'm going to again uh, pause the video and then we add a message to VS code extension channel, Slack channel. I'm not, go I'm going to not put that on a video. It's like an internal thing, just that we released. And that's the whole release. This is how it how it works. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll show you how it looks when uh, we can update the extension in VS Code. Okay, so after 
a little bit of refreshing. I, um, I and I actually restarted VS Code. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. But I restarted VS Code and refreshed by going to the extension uh, page or extension pa extension panel and re refreshing like this. And the VS Code noticed that there is a new version. Uh, my VS Code is has the default setting, which means that it auto updates when it recognizes new version, but you need to reload the the VS code to apply. And so now you see that uh, our GitLab workflow is in version 68.1. And what I usually do, I, I just open it. And again, I test that there is a Maybe we have an issue. Um, that's what I usually test. Okay. So that means that I'm going to be fixing something after this video. But that's it. <laughs> this is the release. Usually it goes more smoothly. I assume that because we were changing the web view, we changed something that that would break it. Other, I, I'd say that we will now do a rollback. Just, it's not a critical issue, but um, might as well. And then I'll fix it and we'll do another release. So how to do rollback? We will do, we will check out the tag th version 360 version 368.0 that's the that's the tag that was there before i'm just going to double check with the change log Three sixty eight one is what we just released. Three sixty eight zero is the previous one. So we are gonna check check out that. Now we are in detached detached head, and we are gonna tag it as. Um, we are just gonna come go here and tag tag it manually. Maybe we will tag it. We will do git. Uh, NPM version 3.68.2 because we already have uh, one. What has happened? Empty changelog for the version 2. We, we now go and in the changelog we just say that this is a rollback release. Change lock. This is a rollback release since uh, three point sixty eight point one broke the web view. This version is identical to three point sixty eight point zero. Okay, and this is going to be that branch, but uh, for posterity, I'm going to add there the change log for 68.1. And so this is my manual change to the to the change log. Let's have a look. Uh, get diff. Okay, git checkout, uh, no, this is just git commit, message is going to be char, manually update change lock. Coming to think of it, this version of the change lock is not going to, like if it's a dead branch, 
if I'll create a uh, change lock, it's not going to be visible. When when you uh, make a release, you know, when you tag it, the tag pipeline will build the current readme and change lock and uh, put it in the Actually, it doesn't put a change lock in there. It just puts the readme into the extension package, and then the change lock is only accessible through through the through our uh, repository. That's the only place where you see the change lock. And so, the main branch is not gonna. I can update the main branch to explain this, but I can't update this. Um, that branch that's only going to be tagged, but there is not going to sorry that the like a detached head that's that's not going to have a branch um, long lived branch to it. So I'm just going to maybe copy the the change from here and put it in main branch. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to open the VS Code extension. I'm going to go to the change lock. To say that I've always had this in mind, but last time I did the the rollback was three three years ago, and I didn't document it, so I'm a little bit freestyling it, but we'll figure it out. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna commit that to the main branch here, so we would see, so people see what the version three sixty eight point two means. But it's not gonna be in in here because. As I explained, it doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to save that somewhere in a temporary file. And I'm going to reset this. I'm going to push the tag. 68. 2. And now we will Again, wait till the the build succeeds. That's roughly uh, that's roughly five minutes, and then we will roll back. And this video is going to be a whole showcase of what all the scenarios can happen during the during the release. Okay, I'll see you then. All right, so the pipeline finished in five minutes and uh, now I'm going to release the the rollback release uh, to both of the marketplaces and I'll see you when the publish publishing finished and we'll double test that the web view is fixed by the rollback and that will conclude the video uh, then I'm going to figure out why the web view is broken and I'll do another release according to the release process all right so the extension updated and now I'll reload the vs code i'm gonna go to the panel i'm gonna open the web view that works i'm glad and that concludes the release and rollback video um now i'm gonna go and fix it Thank you.